Good morning to all. Today's uh, topic is based on interactive session on case-based approach. So coming to the details of periodontal case sheet recording. Learning outcomes are correlate the given findings and diagnose the case applying 2017 period classification system. Compare gingivitis on intact periodontium and reduced periodontium. Differentiate periodontal health and gingivitis. Select the appropriate mechanical plaque control aid for given patients. Clinical situation and identify the chemical placonal agent and its active ingredient and suggest its clinical use. Coming to the introduction, case history, a planned professional conversation which enables the patient to communicate his or her symptoms and explains it to the patient, to the clinician and recorded in the patient's own words as to obtain an insight into the nature of the patient's illness and his or her attitude to them. So it starts with uh, taking the chief complaint and coming to the subjective symptoms and on examination we are able to obtain objective signs and by assessing all these facts we are coming to the diagnosis and then coming to the treatment plan. So to the patient you have to introduce yourself. So you have to be a good listener to the patient and allow the patient to express themselves and uh, you should be trustworthy and ask everything about the medical conditions and write only the pathology. So coming to the patient's demographic details, the details to be noted are name, age, sex, address, occupation and case number. Under name, it should be recorded uh, with an initials and surname for the identification of the patient and for record and recall purpose and for communication. So it will be a psychological beneficial effect also. So age, under age, uh, so it will be different for infants and children and also with the uh, puberty stage uh, people and also with the grown-up people to differentiate with the aggressive and chronic in nature. So infants usually with the eruption, gingivitis and acute herpetic gingivitis, stomatitis will be common. And for the uh, age of like 11 to 17 years, puberty gingival and periperonitis can be seen. And also the gender uh, should be noted that some of the uh, diseases will be different in females and males. At females, uh, puberty gingivitis, pregnancy gingivitis, and menopausal gingival stomatitis. And in males, uh, smoking uh, uh, patients will be more, and which prone to develop periodontitis in chronic smokers. And address uh, is important for the communication with the patient and to rule out endemic diseases like fluorosis. And for occupational type, that is for acid fume works, occupation ha habits like holding nails by anterior teeth in carpenters, shoemakers. So these all uh, will lead to notching of incised ledges of maxillary incisors and patients with high psychological stress uh, would be with the bricksism habit. And case sheet number for easy retrieval of case sheet and for statistical analysis in hospital record. Coming to the chief complaint, the presenting problem of the patient has to be recorded in the patient's own words in one to two sentences, obtained by asking the patient to describe the problem for which help is being sought for reason followed by the chronological time period for which the problem exists. For example, uh, so if the patient is having complaint with bleeding gums, so patient complains of bleeding gums in the lower, the region should be there. Then with the uh, like uh, the uh, duration, you have to write down. So this in perio, usually the complaints can be bleeding gums, pain, swelling, mobile tooth, sensitivity due to root exposure, food lodgement, aesthetic requirement. So writing chief complaint should be on patient on words and also it should be perio complaint. So something related to perio, if you're writing under perio case sheet, it should be uh, like one of this uh, reasons or it can be uh, if the patient just wants to come for routine uh, cleanup also, it can write, write that they came for routine scale cleaning of the teeth, okay? So coming to the history of presenting illness or elaboration of chief complaint. So first one, there is a most important chief complaint, there is a pain and swelling. So under pain and swelling, you have to note down mode of onset, duration, type of pain, radiation or localization of the pain, severity, aggravating and relieving factors. And whether the patient has uh, taken any medication or has consulted a doctor, the details should be noted down. And if there is pain or swelling, you have to rule it out whether it's gingival abscess, that is, uh, that is the acute one and then periodontal abscess or periapical abscess. So when you are differentiating with the gingival abscess, it is more associated with the cervical region, more towards the cervical gingiva and with the periodontal abscess and periapical abscess, periodontal abscess, it will be more dull, constant, less severe uh, 
localized and patient usually can uh, locate the offending tool so it will be associated with the movement or percussion is not as severe as with the pulpal disease and mostly it is towards the lateral aspect of root and then periapical abscess that is will be the pain will be more severe throbbing lasts for long deep unable to locate the offending tool and it will be more severe than peritoneal abscess and usually the tooth will always will be associated with caries the next complaint would be bleeding gums so when the lesion was first observed time of onset spontaneity of uh, bleeding and mode of development uh, the, like during brushing or while eating and symptoms associated with menstrual cycle so what treatment uh, has been done before and duration of bleeding and manner of stopping when the patient is using uh, like mouth rinsing or mouth washes to uh, stop the bleeding so it has to be noted coming to the medical history which is more important that is that is uh, systemic disease or conditions or behavioral factors may play in the course of periodontal disease so which aids in diagnosing oral manifestation of systemic disease and detecting a systemic condition that might be affecting the periodontal disease response to local factors diagnosis diseases that require special precaution or modification in the treatment procedures so coming to the details of medical problems you should, you should ask for medical problems like cardiovascular hematological endocrine etc so if there is any uh, familial history uh, regarding diabetes bleeding disorder should be noted down and also female related hormonal disturbances can be seen then uh, associated uh, gingivitis can be seen and so that also should be noted so if there is anything that nature and duration of the problem and therapy should be noted and if there is any uh, like incidence of the diseases then details of hospitalization and operation should be noted and uh, the medications uh, dosage and duration hormone supplements if you are taking or anticoagulants oral contraceptive pills is all might affect uh, on the gingival finding so it should be noted then history of drug allergy uh, dental materials hypersensitivity should also be collected so coming to the relevant dental history so dental history should be noted so uh, it might get affect on periodontics that is from different departments it is can be from endodontics oral surgery orthodontics or prosthodontics so uh, restorative department it is usually that is a class 1 overfill traumatic occlusion might affect on the periodontium and also overhanging uh, margins might cause gingival irritation and inflammation and overfill root canals might lead to periapical irritation also so in oral surgery that is during extraction adjacent teeth may laxate due to injurious forces and may lead to vertical bone loss intrabony defect for the adjacent teeth and with the orthodontics excess forces usually lead to uh, hyalinization and alveolar bone destruction and orthodontic brackets which get uh, like impinging to the gingiva might cause gingivitis orthodontic induced gingivitis and fruit retention due to appliance may lead to gingivitis uh, in patients with fixer orthodontic appliance therapy then prosthodontics that is acrylic allergy uh, may lead to gingivitis and stomatitis and same thing for lodgment under bridge lead to gingivitis if bony spicules are present so it might lead to gingival sores oral hygiene habits to be noted that is tooth brushing frequency should be noted method of brushing whether it, it is horizontal or vertical so usually this horizontal type of mode of brushing usually results with cervical abrasion and duration also is very important and type of toothbrush whether it's soft or hard usually for after flap surgery and all usually recommend soft uh, brushes for cleaning and then uh, for the normal routine patient we recommend medium uh, toothbrushes the type of dentifrices to be noted powder or paste because uh, powder will have more abrasive agent so will have more chance for sensitivity other aids such as mouth washes finger massage interdental stimulation water irrigation dental flow should be noted coming to the oral destructive habits uh, they are also important uh, while uh, taking the case history that is with the bruxism um, and with uh, unilateral chewing mouth breathing tobacco smoking and nail biting or foreign objects is all are somehow will affect on uh, periodontium will affect the uh, health of periodontium coming to the clinical examination can be divided into general examination and 
extra oral uh, general examination under that extra oral and intra oral and uh, intra oral it can be divided into soft tissue and hard tissue so coming to the general examination that is same as that of the uh, other departments that is examination should commence when the patient enters the dental office the physical condition should be noted shortness of breath after mild exertion could be an indication of cardiac or lung disease and uh, an awkward gait must be the result of degenerative joint disease a neuro nerve system disorder or a muscle problem for the extra oral facial asymmetry is to be noted any pigmentation lymph node to be noted and tmj should be checked coming to the soft tissue examination under that floor of the mouth oropharyngeal region tongue lips soft tissue should be examined for the any of the lesions so coming to the uh, gingival findings so the important one first one is the color so generally uh, it is described as coral pink as a normal gingival health but in asian population we can't see this coral type of thing so we can write it as pinkish in nature so there are three main factors that determine the color of gingiva that is vascular supply thickness and degree of keratinization presence presence of pigment containing cells so uh, you can uh, write down uh, the uh, normal as pinkish and for different conditions you can the color can be changed that is acute gingivitis bright red chronic gingivitis there is bluish red and traumatic occlusion small crescent shaped bluish red area in the marginal gingiva gingival fibrosis it is lighter in color marked pallor of gingiva pernicious anemia and uh, for pale pink you can write for the pallor of gingiva pale pink and also for inflamed condition uh, like bright red or reddish pink you can write and for the established type of gingival stages of gingivitis you can write as bluish and also for the pigmentation for the normal pinkish with brown with melanin pigmentation can be seen some of the uh, patients so coming to the consistency uh, that is the second most important uh, like finding should be noted that is consistency it is firm and resilient with the exception of mobile free margin tightly bound to under underlying bone so if there is any uh, like gingivitis condition it will be soft and edematous and it will be in different in case of the chronic gingivitis and acute form of gingivitis so mostly we uh, come across with this chronic type of gingivitis with soggy puffiness that pits on fissure that is uh, and marked softness and friability then uh, in case of fibrotic changes and gingival enlargement you can see firm leathery consistency is it mean it may just due to fibrosis and epithelial proliferation and uh, acute forms of gingivitis with diffuse puffiness and softness can be seen in case of acute inflammatory origin and sloughing with grayish flake like uh, and uh, that is because of the pseudo membrane in case of uh, like uh, neck that is acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and vesicle formation also can be seen in that type of uh, acute type of gingivitis it is intracellular and intracellular uh, intracellular edema with degeneration of nucleus and cytoplasm and rupture of cell wall coming to the contour and form it will be uh, it mainly depends on shape of teeth and alignment and the arch location and size of the area of the proximal contact and dimension of the facial and lingual embrasures it will uh, be in normal gingiva it will be scallowed and knife edged so if there is any disease condition and uh, it mainly depends on as i said these are the factors that determine the uh, contour and form so usually when there is disease condition it will be rolled out margins with blunt interdental papilla and contour gingival contour changes with the gingival enlargement also so and also in traumatic some other conditions like traumatic uh, trauma from occlusion you can see that still man cleft as the picture shows this is the apostrophe shaped uh, gingival contour that is still man cleft and a coils festoon that is a thickened band like gingival margin so this is called as macaul's festoon so these are the different like uh, like uh, now findings under contour and so coming to the size uh, the sum total of bulk of cellular and intracellular elements and their vascular supply determine the size of gingiva so if there is gingivitis there will be increased uh, amount of uh, gingival enlargement and gingival hyperplasia can be seen 
and it is decreased in gingival atrophy and recession it will be reduced alteration in size is a common feature of gingival disease so for case of gingival enlargement you have to grade it uh, um, according to buckenham uh, classification that is papillary enlargement papillary and marginal and also it is more than two third or uh, three by fourth of the tooth surface it is grade three and also it can be of different types as we said that is inflammatory are uh, there fibrotic more type of fibrotic will be drug being used idiopathic and combined and uh, those associated with the systemic disease that is condition mostly we come across with the pregnancy uh, like uh, gel lagen like puberty vitamin c deficiency and with the systemic diseases that is leukemia granulomatous disease and also neoplastic enlargement benign tumors and malignant tumors and then false enlargement coming to the surface texture a textured surface similar to orange peel appear and is referred to as stippling stippling is bis fueled by drying the gingiva loss of surface stippling is an early sign of gingivitis so i would like to add upon that uh, like we cannot see in every individual in healthy gingiva might uh, you might uh, come across with the absence of stippling also so that is not a disease condition so for that you can write it down as absence of uh, stippling not as loss of stippling so when you write as loss of stippling it should be uh, like loss by the disease so that can be noted as an early sign of gingivitis okay so usually smooth and shiny will be the surface with the exudative type of change with the pocket depth and firm and nodular will be the under fibrotic changes so coming to the position as you know gingival margin if it is coming down it, it might be exposing the tooth surface that is called the gingiva recession so it is refers to the level at which gingival margin attached to the tooth so this is a miller's uh, classification of gingiva recession and now we are following 2017 gingival recession classification recession type 1 2 and 3 so this recession can be classified as visible hidden apparent and actual so visible that is the area what we have we are seeing and hidden that is under the gingival area so apparent actual position will be from is the level of epithelial attachment to the tooth and apparent will be will, will be the is the level of crest of gingival margin so that is what we have seen that is apparent actual will be from here to here this is actual and apparent only will be till the crest of gingival margin coming to the bleeding on probing the insertion of a probe to the bottom of the pocket elicits bleeding on in the gingiva if the gingiva is inflamed and the pocket epithelium is atrophied or ulcerated so it is an early sign than color changes depending on the severity of inflammation so uh, it will be seen in uh, early lesion so it is the earlier sign than color changes so that is bleeding on probing so depending on the severity it vary from a tenuous red line around gingiva sulcus to a profuse bleeding so access, uh, after the successful treatment the bleeding on probing get stop so to test after probing uh, the pro uh, sorry uh, to test for bleeding after probing the probe is carefully introduced to the bottom of the pocket and gently moved along the pocket wall so as it, as the picture shows it should be inserted inside the papilla inside the sulcus so it should wait for at least 30 to 60 seconds for the bleeding then coming to the separation what is separation that is the like like accumulation of a purulent exudate there is the uh, presence of an ex uh, abundant number of uh, neutrophils in the gingival fluid transforms it into a purulent exudate so there is what is called separation clinically you can use the presence of pus in a periodontal pocket is determined by placing the ball of the index finger along the lateral aspect of marble gingiva and applying pressure in a rolling motion toward the crown can be and sometimes it does not provide any diagnostic or prognostic in information however x-rays on digital pressure speaks of uh, pocket and nature of inflammatory changes in the pocket wall so as the, as the picture shows the finger with the digital pressure you can squeeze out and this pus can pus will come out so that is a pus x-ray okay 
so coming to the frenal attachment uh, should be noted uh, in case of uh, finding the pain is important in peri periodontics because uh, it might lead to gingival recession and also improper oral hygiene maintenance so depending on the attachment of fibers it has been classified into classic until 1974 there is mucosal type it is it is attached to mucosa so it doesn't have much effect on periodontia then coming to the gingiva gingiva also doesn't have much uh, effect on periodontia only we see will the aesthetic part and papillary will have some amount of effect on periodontia whereas papillary penetrating will have more effect on periodontia as it leads to gingiva recession and uh, pocket up bone loss and also with aesthetical problem and also midline diastema so this is the test the distension test can be used can be applied uh, to find out the uh, the frenum pull along the area so that is should be applied to lip in outward downward upward motion so retraction of the mucosal margin then pocket formation which leads to pocket formation and initiation of an uh, inflammatory process so which leads to proliferation of uh, adjunctional epithelium and will need extension of the pathological process so this is the uh, like like pathogenesis to get uh, effect on periodontia so next one is width of attached gingiva so width of attached gingiva to be noted it is very important because the attached gingiva is the oblique gingiva that is attached to the periosteum so it has to be noted so it is uh, the distance between mucogingival junction and the projection on the external surface of the bottom of the gingival sulcus or periodontal pocket so it has to be calculated uh, that is this is the total width of attached gingiva from gingival margin to the mucogingival junction and you have to probe it and see the sulcus depth so this is you can probe it and see the sulcus depth and then can be subtracted from the total width of gingiva then you will get the width of attached gingiva see this is how we can measure the by using periodontal probe so you have measured the total width in, uh, till the mucogingival junction then you have probed it inside the sulcus depth and then you have subtracted it from the total width so you will get then one more method is the tension test that is you can just uh, like retract the lip outward and upward and it will be moved so the alveolar mucosa can be differentiated from the attached gingiva then coming to the roll test can be used so you can use the probe to just roll it over the gingiva then this uh, at, uh, this will differentiate the attached gingiva from alveolar mucosa so the normal values uh, ranges are in maxilla it will be 3.5 mm to 4.5 mm and for mandible it is 3.3 to 3.9 mm uh, it is least in first premolar region that is maxilla 1.9 mm and mandible 1.8 mm width of attached gingiva so coming to the most important uh, part of periodontics that is the pocket measurement so there are two types of pockets that is histological depth or the clinical probing depth so histological probing depth it is the actual depth it is the distance between the gingival margin to the base of the pocket so it will be measuring the and their amount of ep, uh, coronal end of uh, junctional epithelium till the coronal end of uh, junctional epithelium till the attachment it will be measuring so for the clinical or probing depth there is a distance to which the probe get penetrated so as you can see that how much it gets penetrated that is the clinical probing depth so probing technique is called walking the probe that is probe is inserted parallel to the long axis of the tooth and walked circumferentially around each surface of the tooth uh, to detect the deepest penetration for concavities you can just obliquely place and uh, find out the depth of the uh, like intra bony defects and uh, otherwise the technique of probe probing is called the walking the probe that is stepping into the each area circumferentially so you will be able to detect the uh, deeper areas and defects so this is what a uh, vertical insertion of the probe may not detect in the dental spaces as we said so that is like obliquely placing you might uh, like find out that with the tactile sensitivity you will Uh, find out the depth of the craters so coming to clinical attachment level so determination of clinical attachment level so first we want to know what is pocket depth and what is the difference between pocket depth and the clinical attachment level 
So pocket is distant from the base of the pocket and the gingival margin. Uh, then you can see that in the picture that this is the uh, pocket depth that is it's from the gingival margin to the base of the pocket. Whereas clinical attachment level it is the distance between the base of the pocket and and a fixed point on the crown such as CEJ. So this has been marked as the clinical attachment level. So then the pocket change from time to time even in untreated periodontal disease also owing to changes in the position of gingival margin. Therefore, it may be unrelated to the existing attachment of tooth. So it might get uh, like it can be uh, coronal migration of gingival margin also and also like uh, apical migration of gingival margin also from time to time period in untreated cases also. That is why it doesn't uh, uh, indicate the severity of periodontal diseases. Whereas clinical attachment level it is fixed, it is a fixed point on the crown is taken as one of the point. So changes in the level of attachment can be due only to gain or loss of attachment and afford a better indication of the degree of periodontal destruction. So which clinical attachment level determines the severity of periodont periodontal diseases. So how to determine the level of attachment that is clinical attachment level how to determine. So when the gingival margin is located on the anatomic crown the level of attachment is determined by subtracting from the depth of the pocket the distance from the gingival margin to the cemento enamel junction. So if both are the same the loss of attachment will be zero. So when the gingival margin coincides with the cemento enamel junction the loss of attachment will be equal to the pocket depth. So when the gingival uh, margin is located apical to cemento enamel junction the loss of attachment will be greater than the pocket depth and therefore the distance between cemento enamel junction and gingival margin should be added to pocket depth. So in the diagram you can see that here the gingival margin at, at the CEJ so that it will be equal the pocket depth and the clinical attachment level will be equal that is 6 mm. Okay. Here you can see that there is coronal migration of gingival margin so it is above CEJ okay and if it is if it is 3 mm above CEJ and the pocket depth is 6 mm then the clinical attachment level will be 9 mm okay so that is probing depth will be more than the clinical attachment level so that is the this one and next one if it is if there is apical migration of gingival margin you can see the pocket depth will be minimal so uh, than the clinical attachment level. Clinical attachment level you have to measure from CEJ till the base of the pocket. So this has to be added. So the pocket depth plus the area of recession should be added for finding the clinical attachment level. So this will be continued as the second part. Thank you.